Chapter Twenty of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day. Chapter Sixteen from the papyrus of ani in the papyrus of ani we see the sun's disk supported by a pair of arms which emerge from the sign of life this in its turn is supported by the pillar which symbolizes the tree trunk which contained the dead body of osiris this pillar rests upon the horizon on each side of it are three apes, typical of the spirits of the dawn, adoring the disk. On the right is the goddess Nephthys, and on the left is the goddess Isis. Nephthys kneels upon the symbol of the sunset, and Isis upon the symbol of the dawn. Above the whole scene is the vaulted sky. In the papyrus of Hunefa, the pillar is endowed with human arms and hands, which grasp the crook and flail, emblematic of Osiris' reign and rule, and the two goddesses are standing upright. One says, I am thy sister, Nephthys, and the other, I am thy sister, Isis, the divine mother the sun is typified by a hawk having a disc encircled by an uraeus upon his head the apes are here seven in number four stand in front and three behind above the whole scene is the vaulted sky a certain papyri have also vignettes which illustrate the hymns to the setting sun. In this case, the hawk usually stands upon the emblem of the west, while apes and gods adore him. In the papyrus of Kenna, on the right, three hawk-headed gods kneel in adoration, with their left arms raised, and on the left, three jackal-headed gods, with their right arms raised in adoration below two lion-headed gods with discs on their heads are seated back to back in a cluster of lotus flowers these typify dawn and eventide the goddess isis kneels in adoration before the lion of the dawn and the goddess nephthys before the Lion of Eventide. Chapter 17 From the Papyrus of Ani Sheets 7 to 10 Vignette Plate 7 1 Ani and his wife, seated in a hall, he is moving a piece on a draught board. 2. The souls of Ani and his wife, in the form of human-headed hawks, standing upon a pylon-shaped building. The bearded soul is described as the soul of Osiris. 3. A table of offerings upon which are lotus flowers, a libation vase, etc. 4. Two lions seated back to back, and supporting the horizon with the sun's disk, over which extends the sky. The lion on the right is called Seth, yesterday, and that on the left, Tuai that is tomorrow five 
the Benu bird, and a table of offerings. 6. The mummy of Ani on a bier within a funeral shrine. At the head and foot are Nephthys and Isis in the form of hawks. Beneath the bier are Ani's palette, variegated marble or glass vessels, etc. Plate eight the god of million of years on his head and in his right hand is the emblem of years his left hand is stretched out over a pool containing the eye of horus two the god uachet ura that is great green water with each hand extended over a pool that under his right hand is called lake of natron and that under his left hand lake of nitre three a pylon with doors called restau that is the gate of the passages of the tomb four the uchat facing to the left above a pylon five the cow may ert the eye of ra with disc and horns a collar and minat and whip six a funeral chest from which emerge the head of ra and his two arms and hands each holding the emblem of life the chest which is called the district of abtu abydos or the burial place of the east has upon its sides figures of the four children of horus who protect the intestines of osiris or the deceased on the right stand tuamautef and keb senuf and on the left, Mesta and Harpy. Plate 9 Figures of three gods, who, together with Mesta, Harpy, Tuamata, and Kebsanuk, are the seven coups referred to in the text. Their names are ma atef Kerry Beck F and Heru Kenti and Maati or Murti. Two. The god Ampu Anubis, jackal headed. Three. Figures of seven gods whose names are Natcha Natcha, Aket Ket, Kenti He. Ami Unat F, Tesha Ma, Bas Ma M Ker, and An M Haru. Four. The soul of Ra, in the form of a hawk, with a disc on his head, conversing in tattoo, with the soul of Osiris, in the form of a human-headed bird, wearing the white crown this scene is of the rarest occurrence plate ten the cat emblematic of the sun cutting off the head of the serpent apep or apepi typical of darkness two three seated deities each holding a knife three ani and his wife Thuthu, kneeling in adoration before the god Kepara, beetle-headed, who is seated in the boat of the rising sun. 4. Two apes, emblematic of the goddesses Isis and Nephthys. 5. The god Tem, seated within the sun-disk, 
in the boat of the setting sun six the god rehu in the form of a lion seven the serpent Yuachet, the lady of flame a symbol of the eye of ra coiled round a lotus flower above is the emblem of fire chapter seventeen from the papyrus of ani and from the papyrus of nebsani text here begin the praises and glorifyings of coming out from and of going into the glorious underworld which is in the beautiful amentet of coming out by day in all the forms of existence which please him that is the deceased of playing at draughts and sitting in the hall and of coming forth as a living soul saith osiris the scribe ani after he hath come to his haven of rest it is good for a man to recite this i am the god tem in rising i am the only one i came into existence in nu i am ra who rose in the beginning the ruler of this who then is this it is ra when at the beginning he rose in the city of sutenhenen heracleopolis magna crowned like a king in his rising the pillars of the god shu were not as yet created when he was upon the high ground of him that dwelleth in kemenu hermopolis magna i am the great god who gave birth to himself even nu who made his names to become the company of the gods as god who then is this it is ra the creator of the names of his limbs which came into being in the form of the gods who are in the train of ra i am he who is not driven back among the gods who then is this it is tem the dweller in his disc or as others say it is ra in his rising in the eastern horizon of heaven i am yesterday i know to-morrow who then is this yesterday is osiris and to-morrow is ra on the day when he shall destroy the enemies of neb and when he shall establish as prince and ruler his son horus or as others say on the day when we commemorate the festival of the meeting of the dead osiris with his father ra and when the battle of the gods was fought in which osiris the lord of amentet was the leader what then is this it is amentet that is to say the creation of the souls of the gods when osiris was leader in set amentet or as others say it is amentet which ra hath given unto me when any god cometh he doth arise and doeth battle for it i know the god who dwelleth therein who then is this it is osiris or as others say ra is his name or it is the phallus of ra wherewith he was united to himself i am the benu bird which is in anu heliopolis and i am the keeper of the volume of the book of things which are and of things which shall be who then is this it is osiris or as others say it is his dead body or as others say it is his filth the things which are and the things which shall be 
are his dead body, or, as others say, they are eternity and everlastingness. Eternity is the day, and everlastingness is the night. I am the god Amsu in his coming forth. May his two plumes be set upon my head for me. Who, then, is this? Amsu is Horus, the avenger of his father, and his coming forth is his birth. The plumes upon his head are Isis and Nephthys, when they go forth to set themselves there, even as his protectors, and they provide that which his head lacketh, or, as others say, they are the two exceeding great Uriai, which are upon the head of their father Tem, or, as others say, his two eyes are the two plumes which are upon his head. Osiris, Ani, the scribe of all the holy offerings, riseth up in his place in triumph, he cometh into his city. What, then, is this? It is the horizon of his father Tem. I have made an end of my shortcomings, and I have put away my faults. What, then, is this? It is the cutting off of the corruptible in the body of Osiris, the scribe Ani victorious before all the gods, and all his faults are driven out. What, then, is this? It is the purification of Osiris on the day of his birth. I am purified in my great double nest, which is in Suten Henen, Heracleopolis Magna, on the day of the offerings of the followers of the great God who is therein. What, then, is this? Millions of years is the name of the one nest great green lake is the name of the other a pool of natron and a pool of nitre or as others say the traverser of millions of years is the name of one great green lake is the name of the other or as others say the begetter of millions of years is the name of one great green lake is the name of the other now as concerning the great god who dwelleth therein it is ra himself i pass over the way i know the head of the pool of mark what then is this it is restau that is to say it is the underworld on the south of na arot f and it is the northern door of the tomb now as concerning the pool of maat it is abtu abydos or as others say it is the boat by which his father tem travelleth when he goeth forth to sekat aru which bringeth forth the food and nourishment of the gods who are behind their shrines now the gate of Tachesert is the gate of the pillars of Shu, the northern gate of the Tuat underworld, or, as others say, it is the two leaves of the door through which the god Tem passeth when he goeth forth to the eastern horizon of heaven. O ye gods who are in the presence of Osiris, Grant me your arms, for I am the god who shall come into being among you. Who, then, are these? They are the drops of blood which came forth from the phallus of Ra when he went forth to perform mutilation upon himself. They sprang into being as the gods Hu and Sa, who are in the following of Ra, and who accompany the god Tem daily and every day. I, Osiris, the scribe Ani, triumphant, have filled for thee the Uchat 
after it had suffered failure on the day of the combat of the two fighters, that is, Horus and Set. What, then, is this? It is the day on which Horus fought with Set, who cast filth in the face of Horus, and when Horus destroyed the members of Set. Now this Thoth did with his own fingers. I lift up the hair-cloud when there are storms and quakings in the sky. What, then, is this? It is the right eye of Ra, which raged against Set when he sent it forth. Thoth raised up the hair-cloud, and brought the eye alive, and whole, and sound, and without defect to its lord. Or, as others say, it is the eye of Ra, when it is sick, and when it weepeth for its fellow eye. Then Thoth standeth up to cleanse it. I behold Ra, who was born yesterday, from the buttocks of the goddess Mehort. His strength is my strength, and my strength is his strength. What, then, is this? It is the watery abyss of heaven, or, as others say, it is the image of the eye of Ra in the morning at his daily birth. Me'ert is the eye, Uchat, of Ra. Therefore, Osiris, the scribe Ani, triumphant, is a great one among the gods who are in the train of Horus. The words are spoken for him that loveth his lord. What, then, is this? The gods who are in the train of Horus are Meshta, Hapi, Tuamata, and Kebsenu. Homage to you, O ye lords of right and truth, ye sovereign princes who stand behind Osiris, who utterly do away with sins and crimes, and who are in the following of the goddess Hetepsekus, grant ye that I may come unto you. Destroy ye all the faults which are within me, even as ye did for the seven coups who are among the followers of their lord Sepak. Anubis appointed their place on the day when twas said, Come, therefore, thither. When, then, is this? These lords of right and truth are Thoth and Astes, the lord of Amentet. The sovereign princes who stand behind Osiris, even Mestar, Harpy, Tuamata, and Kebsenuf, are they who are behind the thigh in the northern sky. Now, those who do utterly away with sins and crimes, and who are in the following of Hetepsekus, are the god Sebek, who dwelleth in the water. The goddess Hetepsekus, is the eye of Ra, or, as others say, it is the flame which followeth after Osiris to burn up the souls of his enemy. As concerning all the faults which are in Osiris, the scribe of the offerings of all the gods, Ani, triumphant, this is all that he hath done against the lords of eternity, since he came forth from his mother's womb. As concerning the seven coups, even Mestar, Harpy, Tuamata, Kebsenuf, Maha Atef F, Keri Bek F, and Hero Kenti and Maati, Anubis appointed them to be protectors of the dead body of Osiris, or, as others say, set them behind the place of purification of Osiris. Or, as others say, these seven coups are Netcher Netcher, Art Ketet, 
an erta nef bes ef kenti he ef ak her ami unut ef tesha maati ami het anes ubes hara per em ket ket and mach em ker em nef em haru the chief of the sovereign princes who are in na arat f is horus the avenger of his father as concerning the day upon which was said come therefore thither it referreth to the words come then thither which ra spake unto osiris lo may this be said unto me in amentet I am the divine soul which dwelleth in the two divine Tchafi. What then is this? It is Osiris when he goeth into Tatu and findeth there the soul of Ra. There the one god embraceth the other, and divine souls spring into being within the two divine chaffy the following lines are from the papyrus of nebsene as concerning the two divine chaffy they are haru nech hara tefep and haru kent and maati or as others say the double divine soul which dwelleth in the two divine Tchafi is the soul of Ra and the soul of Osiris, or, as others say, it is the soul which dwelleth in Shu and the soul which dwelleth in Tepnut, and these are the double divine soul which dwelleth in Tatu. I am the cat which fought hard by the Percy tree in Anu Heliopolis on the night when the foes of neb were destroyed who then is this the male cat is ra himself and he is called mao by reason of the speech of the god sa who said concerning him he is like mao unto that which he hath made thus his name became Mao, or as others say it is the god shu who maketh over the possessions of seb to osiris as concerning the fight hard by the percy tree in anu it concerneth the children of impotent revolt when justice is wrought on them for what they have done as concerning the night of the battle these words refer to the inroad of the children of impotent revolt into the eastern part of heaven whereupon there arose a battle in heaven and in all the earth o thou who art in thine egg that is ra who shinest from thy disk and risest in thy horizon and dost shine like gold above the sky like unto whom there is none among the gods who sailest over the pillars of Shu, that is, in the ether, who givest blasts of fire from thy mouth, who makest the two lands bright with thy radiance, deliver thou the pious Nepsene from the god whose form is hidden, whose eyebrows are like unto the two arms of the balance on the night of reckoning destruction. Who, then, is this? it is an a f that is the god who bringeth his arm as concerning the night of reckoning destruction it is the night of the burning of the damned and of the overthrow of the wicked at the block and of the slaughter of souls who then is this it is nemo the headsman of Osiris, or, as others say, it is Apep, when he riseth up with one head 
bearing ma'at, that is, right and truth, upon it. Or, as others say, it is Horus, when he riseth up with a double head, whereof the one beareth right and truth, and the other wickedness. He bestoweth wickedness on him that worketh wickedness, and right and truth upon him that followeth righteousness and truth. Or, as others say, it is Horus the Great who dwelleth in Sechem, Letopolis. Or, as others say, it is Thoth. Or, as others say, it is Nefertem. Or, as others say, it is Sep who doth thwart the acts of the foes of neb er Deliver thou the scribe Nebsani victorious from the watchers, who bear slaughtering knives, and who have cruel fingers, and who slay those who are in the following of Osiris. May they never gain the mastery over me, may I never fall under their knives. What, then, is this? It is Anubis and it is Horus, in the form of Kenet and Mati, or, as others say, it is the sovereign princes who thwart the works of their weapons, or, as others say, it is the chiefs of the Shenyu chamber. May their knives never gain the mastery over me, may I never fall under their instruments of cruelty, for I know their names, and I know the being Machet who was among them in the house of Osiris, shooting rays of light from his eye, but who himself is unseen. He goeth round about heaven, robed in the flame of his mouth, commanding happy, but remaining himself unseen. May I be strong upon earth before Ra, may I come happily into heaven, in the presence of Osiris. Let not your offerings be wanting to me, O ye who preside over your altars, for I am among those who follow up the neb er chair according to the writings of Kepara. I fly as a hawk, I cackle as a goose, I ever slay, even as the serpent goddess neheb What, then, is this those who preside over their altars are the similitude of the eye of ra and the similitude of the eye of horus o ra tem thou lord of the great house thou sovereign life strength and health of all the gods deliver thou the scribe nebsene victorious from the god whose face is like unto that of a greyhound whose brows are as those of a man, and who feedeth upon the dead, who watcheth at the bite of the lake of fire, and who devoureth the bodies of the dead, and swalloweth hearts, and who shooteth forth filth, but he himself remaineth unseen. Who, then, is this? Devourer for millions of years is his name, and he liveth in the art. As Concerning the art, it is that which is in an root f, hard by the Shenyu chamber. The unclean man, who would walk thereover, doth fall down among the knives. Or, others say, his name is Mates, and he is the watcher of the door of Amentet. Or, as others say, his name is Beba, and it is he who watcheth the bite of Amentet, or, as others say, Harry Sap F is his name. Hail, Lord of Terror, Chief of the lands of the North and South, Thou Lord of the Red Glow, or Red Lands, who preparest the slaughter-box, and who dost feed upon the inward parts. Who, then, is this? The Guardian of the bite of Amentet. What, then, is this? It is the heart of Osiris, 
which is the devourer of all slaughtered things the urarat crown hath been given unto him with gladness of heart as lord of sutenhenen heracleopolis magna what then is this he to whom hath been given the urarat crown with gladness of heart as lord of sutenhenen is osiris he was bidden to rule among the gods on the day of the union of earth in the presence of neb what then is this he that was bidden to rule among the gods is horus the son of isis who was appointed to rule in the place of his father osiris as concerning the day of the union of earth with earth it is the mingling of earth with earth in the coffin of osiris the soul that liveth in suten henem the giver of meat and drink the destroyer of wrong and the guide of the everlasting paths who then is this it is ra himself deliver thou the osiris nepsene victorious the following lines are from the papyrus of ani from the great god who carrieth away the soul who eateth hearts and who feedeth upon offal the guardian of the darkness the dweller in the seker boat those who live in crime fear him who then is this it is suti or as others say it is smam ur the soul of seb hail kepera in thy boat the twofold company of the gods is thy body deliver thou osiris ani victorious from the watchers who give judgment who have been appointed by the god neb to protect him and to fasten the fetters on his foes and to slaughter in the shambles there is no escape from their grasp may they never stab me with their knives may i never fall helpless into their chambers of torture never have the things which the gods hate been done by me for i am pure within the masket cakes of saffron have been brought unto him in tananet who then is this it is kepara in his boat it is ra himself as concerning the watchers who give judgment they are the apes isis and nephthys as concerning the things which are abominated by the gods they are wickedness and falsehood and he who passeth through the place of purification within the mesket is anpu anubis who is behind the chest which containeth the inward parts of osiris he to whom saffron cakes have been brought in taninet is osiris or as others say the saffron cakes in taninet are heaven and earth or as others say they are shu strengthener of the two lands in suten Hainen heracleopolis magna the saffron cakes are the eye of horus and tananet is the burial place of osiris tam hath built thy house and the double lion god hath founded thy habitation lo drugs are brought and horus purifieth and set strengtheneth and set purifieth and horus strengtheneth the osiris the scribe ani victorious before osiris hath come into the land and he hath taken possession thereof with his two feet he is ten and he is in the city turn thou back o rehu whose mouth shineth whose head moveth turn thou back from before his strength or as others say turn thou back from him who keepeth watch and is unseen the osiris ani is safely guarded 
he is isis and he is found with her hair spread over him i shake it out over his brow he was conceived in isis and begotten in nephthys and they cut off from him the things which should be cut off fear followeth after thee terror is upon thine arms thou hast been embraced for millions of years by the arms of the nations mortals go round about thee thou smitest down the mediators of thy foes and thou seizest the arms of the powers of darkness the two sisters that is isis and nephthys are given to thee for thy delight thou hast created that which is in ker abba and that which is in anu heliopolis every god feareth thee for thou art exceeding great and terrible thou avengest every god on the man that curseth him and thou shootest out arrows thou livest according to thy will thou art you are chet the lady of flame evil cometh among those who set themselves up against thee what then is this hidden in form granted of menu is the name of the tomb he seeth what is on his hand is the name of kera or as others say the name of the block now he whose mouth shineth and whose head moveth is the member of osiris or as others say of ra thou spreadest thy hair and i shake it out over his brow is spoken concerning isis who hideth in her hair and draweth her hair over her you are chet the lady of flames is the eye of ra end of chapter twenty Chapter Twenty One of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day. Chapter Eighteen introduction from the papyrus of ani vignette upper register the priest an mautef who wears a leopard skin and has on the right side of his head the lock of hair of harold parkrat hippocrates introducing ani and his wife to the god one text the speech of samert f i have come unto you o great and godlike sovereign rulers who dwell in heaven and in earth and in the underworld and i have brought unto you osiris ani he hath not sinned against any of the gods grant ye that he may be with you for all time two Ani's speech the adoration of osiris the lord of restau and of the great company of the gods who dwell in the underworld by osiris the scribe ani who saith homage to thee o thou ruler of amentet unefa in abtu abydos i have come unto thee and my heart holdeth right and truth there is no sin in my body nor have i lied wittingly nor have i done aught with a false heart grant thou to me food in the tomb and that i may come forth into thy presence at the altar of the lords of right and truth and that i may enter into and come forth from the underworld and that my soul be not turned back and that i may behold the face of the sun and that i may behold the moon for ever and for ever vignette 
lower register. The priest, Sa Mer F, who wears a leopard skin, and has on the right side of his head the lock of hair of Herul Pa Krat, Hippocrates, introducing Ani and his wife to the gods. 3. Text. The Speech of Samer F. I have come unto you, O sovereign princes who dwell in Rastau, and I have brought unto you Osiris Ani. Grant ye to him, as to the followers of Horus, cakes and water and air, and a homestead in Seket Hetep, Arne's speech. 4. The adoration of Osiris, Lord of Everlastingness, and of the sovereign princes, the lords of Restau, by Osiris, the scribe Arne, who saith, Homage to thee, O king of the underworld, thy governor of Akert. I have come unto thee, I know thy ways, and I am furnished with the forms which thou takest in the underworld. Grant thou to me a place in the underworld, near unto the lords of right and truth. May my homestead be abiding in Seket Hetep, and may I receive cakes in thy presence. Chapter 18 from the papyrus of Nebsene, and from the papyrus of Ani. Vignettes. A pylon surmounted by feathers, typical of Mart, and by Urayi wearing discs, and a pylon surmounted by Anpu, Anubis, or Apuat, and by an Achat. Hail, Thoth, thou who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou the scribe Nepsene to be victorious over his enemies, as thou didst make Osiris victorious over his enemies, in the presence of the sovereign princes who are with Ra and Osiris in Anu, Heliopolis, on the night of the things of the night, and on the night of the battle, and on the night of the shackling of the subdue fiends, and on the day of the destruction of neb er A. Vignette. The gods Tem, Shu, Tepnut, Osiris, and Thoth. Text. The great sovereign princes in Anu are Tem, Shu, Tepnut, Osiris, and Thoth and the shackling of the Sebdu fiends signifieth the destruction of the fiends of Set, when, a second time, he worketh evil. Hail, Thoth, who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou the Osiris Ani to be victorious over his enemies, in the presence of the great and sovereign princes who are in Tatu on the night of making the tet to stand up in tattoo. B. Vignette. The gods Osiris, Isis, Nephthys, and Horus. Text. The great sovereign princes in tattoo are Osiris, Isis, Nephthys, and Herod Net Haratef. Now the night of making the tet to stand up in tattoo, signifieth the lifting up of the arm and shoulder of Horus, who dwelleth in Sekem, Letopolis. And these gods stand behind Osiris to protect him, even as do the swathings which clothe him. Hail, Thoth, who made us Osiris victorious over his enemies. Make thou Osiris Ani, triumphant over his enemies, in the presence of the sovereign princes who are in Sekem, Letopolis, on the night of the Things of the Night Festival in Sekem. C. Vignette. 
the gods Osiris and Horus, the two Uchats upon pylons, and the god Thoth. Text The great sovereign princes who are in Sekem are Heru, Kenti, and Mati, and Thoth, who is with the sovereign princes in Nararut Af. Now the night of the things of the night festival in Sekem signifieth the light of the rising sun on the coffin of Osiris. Hail, Thoth, who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies. Make thou the Osiris Ani triumphant over his enemies, in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in Pet and in Tep, on the night of setting up the columns of Horus, and of making him to be established as heir of the things which belonged to his father Osiris. D. Vignette The gods Horus, Isis, Mesta, and Nephthys. Text The great sovereign princes who are in Pet and Tept are Horus, Isis, Mesta, and Hapi. Now setting up the columns of Horus signifieth the command given by Set unto his followers. Set up columns upon it. Hail, Thoth, who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou the Osiris Ani triumphant in peace, victorious over his enemies, in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the lands of Recti, on the night when Isis lay down to keep watch, in order to make lamentation for her brother Osiris. E. Vignette The gods Isis, Horus, Anpu, Anubis, Mesta, and Thoth. Text The great sovereign princes who are in the lands of Erecti are Isis, Horus, Anubis, Mestha, and Thoth. Hail, Thoth, who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou Osiris the scribe Ani triumphant in peace, to be victorious over his enemies, in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in Abtu Abydos, on the night of the god Hakak, at the separation of the wicked dead, at the judgment of the Kus, and at the rising up of joy in Taini, this. F. Vignette The gods Osiris, Isis, and Apuat, and the Tet. The great sovereign princes who are in Abtu are Osiris, Isis, and Apuat. Hail, Thoth, who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou Osiris Ani the scribe and teller of the sacred offerings of all the gods to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the sovereign princes who judge the dead on the night of the carrying out of the sentence upon those who are to die. G. Vignette The gods Thoth, Osiris, Anpu, Anubis, and Astenu. Text The great sovereign princes in the judgment of the dead are Thoth, Osiris, Anubis, and Astenu. Now the carrying out of the sentence upon those who are to die is the withholding of that which is so needful to the souls of the children of impotent revolt. Hail, Thoth, who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou Osiris the scribe Ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes, on the festival of the breaking and turning up of the earth in Tatu, on the night of the breaking and turning up of the earth in their blood, and of making Osiris to be victorious over his enemies. 
h vignette the three gods of the festival of breaking up the earth in tattoo text when the fiends of set come and change themselves into beasts the great sovereign princes on the festival of the breaking and turning up of the earth in tattoo slay them in the presence of the gods therein and their blood floweth among them as they are smitten down these things are allowed to be done by them by the judgment of those who are in tattoo hail thoth who madest osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou the osiris ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in na ararut of on the night of him who concealeth himself in diverse forms even osiris i vignette the gods ra osiris shu and baby who is dog-headed text the great sovereign princes who are in na ararut f are ra osiris shu and baby now the knight of him who concealeth himself in diverse forms even osiris is when the thigh and the head and the heel and the leg are brought nigh unto the coffin of osiris unnefer hail thoth who madest osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou osiris ani to be victorious over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes in rastau on the night when anubis lay with his arms and his hands over the things behind osiris and when horus was made to triumph over his enemies j vignette the gods horus osiris isis text the great sovereign princes in restau are horus osiris and isis the heart of osiris rejoiceth and the heart of horus and therefore are the northern and southern parts of heaven at peace hail thoth who madest Osiris victorious over his enemies, make thou Osiris Ani, the scribe and teller of the divine offerings of all the gods, to triumph over his enemies in the presence of the ten companies of great sovereign princes who are with Ra and with Osiris and with every god and goddess in the presence of Neb er He hath destroyed his enemies and he hath destroyed every evil thing belonging unto him rubric this chapter being recited the deceased shall come forth by day purified after death and he shall make all the transformations which his heart shall dictate now if this chapter be recited over him he shall come forth upon earth he shall escape from every fire and none of the foul things which appertain unto him shall encompass him for eternity or for ever and ever chapter nineteen from lepsius toten book vignette this chapter is without a vignette the chapter of the chaplet of victory osiris auf ank victorious born of sherat amsu victorious saith thy father tem hath woven for thee a beautiful chaplet of victory to be placed on thy living brow o thou who lovest the gods and thou shalt live for ever osiris Kent Amentet hath made thee to triumph over thine enemies, and thy father Seb hath decreed for thee all his inheritance. 
come therefore o horus son of isis for thou o son of osiris sittest upon the throne of thy father ra to overthrow thine enemies for he hath ordained for thee the two lands to their utmost limits artem hath also ordained this and the company of the gods hath confirmed the splendid power of the victory of horus the son of isis and the son of osiris for ever and for ever and osiris auf ank shall be victorious for ever and ever o osiris kent amantet the hall of the northern and southern parts of the heavens and every god and every goddess who are in heaven and who are upon earth will the victory of horus the son of isis and the son of osiris over his enemies in the presence of osiris kent amantet who will make osiris auf and victorious to triumph over his enemies in the presence of osiris kent amantet unnefer the son of nut on the day of making him to triumph over set and his fiends in the presence of the great sovereign chiefs who are in anu heliopolis on the night of the battle and overthrow of the sabre fiend in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in abtu on the night of making osiris to triumph over his enemies make thou osiris auf ank triumphant to triumph over his enemies in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the horizon of amentet on the day of the festival of haka in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in tattoo on the night of the setting up of the tet in tattoo in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the ways of the damned on the night of the judgment of those who shall be annihilated in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in sekem letopolis on the night of the things of the altars in sekem in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in pay and tect on the night of the establishing of the inheriting by horus of the things of his father osiris in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are at the great festival at the ploughing and turning up of the earth in tattoo or as others say in abtu on the night of the weighing of words or as others say weighing of locks in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in an rutaf on its place on the night when horus receiveth the birth chamber of the gods in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in the lands of recti on the night when isis lieth down to watch and to make lamentation for her brother in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in restau on the night of making osiris to triumph over all his enemies horus repeated these words four times and all his enemies fell headlong and were overthrown and were cut to pieces and osiris auf ank triumphant repeated these words four times therefore let all his enemies fall headlong and be overthrown and cut to pieces horus the son of isis and son of osiris celebrated in turn millions of festivals and all his enemies fell headlong and were overthrown and cut to pieces their habitation hath gone forth to the block of the east their heads have been cut off their necks have been destroyed their thighs have been cut off they have been given over to the great destroyer who dwelleth in the valley of the grave and they shall never come forth from under the restraint of the god seb rubric this chapter shall be recited over the divine chaplet which is laid upon the face of the deceased and thou shalt cast incense into the fire on behalf of osiris of ank triumphant 
born of Sheret Amsu triumphant. Thus shalt thou cause him to triumph over his enemies, dead or alive, and he shall be among the followers of Osiris. And a hand shall be stretched out to him with meat and drink in the presence of the god. This chapter shall be said by him twice at dawn. Now it is a never-failing charm, regularly and continually. Chapter 20 From the Papyrus of Nebsani Vignette This chapter, in the Theban version, has neither vignette nor title. Text Hail, Thoth, who didst make Osiris to triumph over his enemies, snare thou the enemies of Osiris, the scribe Nebsani, the lord of piety, in the presence of the great sovereign princes of every god and of every goddess, in the presence of the great sovereign princes who are in Anu, Heliopolis, on the night of the battle, and of the overthrow of the Sabao fiend in Tatu, on the night of making to stand up the double tet in Sechem, Letopolis, on the night of the things of the night in Sechem, in Pe, and in Tepu, on the night of the establishing of Horus in the heritage of the things of his father in the double land of Recti, on the night when Isis maketh lamentation at the side of her brother Osiris in Abtu, Abydos, on the night of the Haker festival of the distinguishing between the dead, that is, the damned, and the ones on the path of the dead, that is, the damned, on the night of the judgment of those who are to be annihilated at the great festival of the ploughing and the turning up of the earth in Narerutef in Restau, and on the night of making Horus to triumph over his enemies. Horus is mighty, the northern and southern halves of heaven rejoice. Osiris is content thereat, and his heart is glad. Hail, Thoth, make thou to triumph Osiris, the scribe Nebsani, over his enemies, in the presence of the sovereign princes of every god and every goddess, and in the presence of you, ye sovereign princes, who pass judgment on Osiris behind the shrine. In the Sa'ite recension, this chapter has no vignette, but it has the title another chapter of the chaplet of victory and is arranged in tabular form the words hail thoth make osiris auf ank triumphant to triumph over his enemies even as thou didst make osiris to triumph over his enemies which are written in two horizontal lines are to be repeated before each column of text the great sovereign princes invoked are those of one anu heliopolis two tatu three sechem letopolis four pe and tep five an arut f six the double land of recti seven restau eight abtu nine the paths of the dead ten the ploughing festival in Tatu, eleven, Ker Abba, twelve, Osiris, thirteen, heaven and earth, fourteen, every god and every goddess. The rubric reads, If this chapter be recited regularly and always by a man who hath purified himself in water of Natron, he shall come forth by day, after he hath come into port, that is, is dead, and he shall perform all the transformations which his heart shall dictate, and he shall come forth from every fire. Chapter 21 From the Papyrus of Nu In the vignette, a priest is shown 
holding a vase in the left hand, and the ram-headed serpent-like instrument called Er Hekau, that is, great of enchantments, in the right. With the latter, he is about to touch the mouth of the deceased, who is standing before him. Behind the deceased is a man seated on a chair and holding a staff in his left hand. Text. The chapter of giving a mouth to the overseer of the house Nu, triumphant in the underworld. He saith, Homage to thee, O thou lord of brightness, thou who art at the head of the great house, prince of the night and of thick darkness, I have come unto thee, being a pure coup. Thy two hands are behind thee, and thou hast thy lot with thy ancestors. O oh, grant thou unto me my mouth, that I may speak therewith, and guide thou to me my heart at the season when there is cloud and darkness. Chapter 22 From the Papyrus of Ani Vignette In the Papyrus of Nebseni, the guardian of the balance, is seen with his right hand stretched out to touch the mouth of the deceased who stands before him. In other papyri, the deceased himself is seen standing with either his right or his left hand raised to his mouth. Text. The chapter of giving a mouth to Osiris Ani, the scribe, and teller of the holy offerings of all the gods, triumphant in the underworld. He saith, I rise out of the egg in the hidden land. May my mouth be given unto me, that I may speak therewith in the presence of the great God, the Lord of the Tuat underworld. May my hand and my arm not be forced back in the presence of the sovereign princes of any God. I am Osiris, the Lord of Resto. May I Osiris, the scribe Ani, triumphant, have a portion with him who is on the top of the steps, that is, Osiris. According to the desire of my heart, I have come from the pool of fire, and I have quenched the fire. Chapter 23 From the Papyrus of Ani Vignette the statue of Ani the scribe, seated upon a pedestal in the form of the emblem of Mart, that is, right and truth. Before it stands the Sem priest, clad in a panther skin, and holding in his right hand the ram-headed serpent-like instrument, er Hekau, with which he is about to touch the lips of the statue, and so perform the ceremony of opening the mouth. At his feet are a sepulchral box for holding unguents, etc. Three instruments, called respectively Seb-Ur, Tun-Tet, and Temanu, and the object called pesh en -Kef. In the papyrus of Nebseni, the scene is described as the Sem priest performing the ceremony of the opening of the mouth. Text The chapter of opening the mouth of Osiris, the scribe Ani triumphant, saith, May the god Ptah open my mouth, and may the god of my city loose the swathings, even the swathings which are over my mouth. Moreover, may Thoth being filled and furnished with charms, come and loose the bandages, even the bandages of Set, which fetter my mouth. And may the god Tem hurl them at those who would fetter me with them, and drive them back. May my mouth be opened, may my mouth be unclosed by Shu with his iron knife, where would he open the mouth of the gods. I am the goddess Seket and I sit upon my place in the great wind of heaven. I am the great goddess Sab, 
who dwelleth among the souls of Anu, Heliopolis. Now, as concerning every charm, and all the words which may be spoken against me, may the gods resist them, and may each and every one of the company of the gods withstand them. End of chapter 21chapter twenty two of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison the chapters of coming forth by day chapter twenty four from the papyrus of Ani. Vignette. This chapter has no vignette in the Theban papyri. Text. The chapter of bringing charms unto Osiris Ani in the underworld. He saith, I am Tem Kepara, who brought himself into being upon the thigh of his divine mother those who are in nu that is the sky are made wolves and those who are among the sovereign princes are become hyenas behold i gather together the charm from every place where it is and from every man with whom it is swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light Hail, thou who towest along the Macant boat of Ra. The stays of thy sails and of thy rudder are taut in the wind as thou sailest up the pool of fire in the underworld. Behold, thou gatherest together the charm from every place where it is, and from every man with whom it is, swifter than greyhounds and quicker than light the charm which createth the forms of being from the mother, and which either createth the gods, or maketh them silent, and which giveth the heat of fire unto the gods. Behold, the charm is given unto me from wherever it is, and from him with whom it is, swifter than greyhounds, and quicker than light, or, as others say, quicker than a shadow. Chapter 25 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette In the greater number of the Theban papyri, this chapter is without vignette. In the Brocklehurst papyrus, however, the sem priest, wearing a panther's skin, is seen holding up before the face of the deceased, who stands before him, a small bearded figure, like an ushabti in the turin papyrus the priest and the deceased are standing facing each other and no ceremony is being performed text the chapter of making a man to possess memory in the underworld the chancellor in chief new triumphant the overseer of the palace the son of the chief chancellor amen hetep saith may my name be given to me in the great house and may i remember my name in the house of fire on the night of counting the years and of telling the number of the months i am with the divine one and i sit on the eastern side of heaven if any god whatsoever should advance unto me let me be able to proclaim his name forthwith chapter twenty six from the papyrus of arnie vignette the scribe ani clothed in white and with his heart in his right hand addressing the god anpu anubis jackal-headed in his left hand which is outstretched ani holds a necklace of several rows of coloured beads the clasp is made in the form of a pylon or gateway and on the side of the pendant which is in the same form 
is a representation of a scarab or beetle in a boat to typify the sun-god ra kepara in his boat from the pendant hang lotus flowers in other theban papyri the vignettes are different in the papyrus of nebseni the god anubis who dwelleth in the city of embalmment gives a heart to the deceased and in others the deceased is seen either being embraced by anubis or addressing his heart which rests upon a standard before him in the turin papyrus the deceased is seen kneeling before his own soul which is in the form of a human-headed hawk and clasping his heart to his breast with his left hand text the chapter of giving a heart to osiris ani in the underworld he saith may my heart be with me in the house of hearts may my heart be with me in the house of hearts may my heart be with me and may it rest there or i shall not eat of the cakes of osiris on the eastern side of the lake of flowers neither shall i have a boat wherein to go down the nile nor another wherein to go up nor shall i be able to sail down the nile with thee may my mouth be given to me that i may speak therewith and my two legs to walk therewith and my two hands and arms to overthrow my foe may the doors of heaven be opened unto me may seb the prince of the gods open wide his two jaws unto me may he open my two eyes which are blindfolded may he cause me to stretch apart my two legs which are bound together and may anpu anubis make my thighs firm so that i may stand upon them may the goddess seket make me to rise so that i may ascend unto heaven and may that be done which i command in the house of the car double of ptah that is memphis i understand with my heart i have gained the mastery over my heart i have gained the mastery over my two hands i have gained the mastery over my legs i have gained the power to do whatsoever my car double pleaseth my soul shall not be fettered to my body at the gates of the underworld but i shall enter in peace and i shall come forth in peace chapter twenty seven from the papyrus of ani vignette the scribe ani with hands raised in adoration and his heart which is set upon a pedestal in the presence of four gods who are seated upon a pedestal in the form of the emblem of mart in the turin papyrus the deceased is shown kneeling before the four children of horus text the chapter of not letting the heart hati of a man be taken from him in the underworld saith osiris ani his heart goeth forth to take up its abode in his body his heart is renewed before the gods and he hath gained the mastery over it hail ye who carry away hearts hail ye who steal hearts and who make the heart of a man to go through its transformations according to his deeds let not what he hath done harm him before you homage to you o ye lords of eternity ye possessors of everlastingness take ye not this heart of osiris ani into your grasp this heart of osiris and cause ye not words of evil to spring up against it because this is the heart of osiris ani triumphant and it belongeth unto him of many names that is thoth the mighty one whose words are his limbs and who sendeth forth his heart to dwell in his body the heart of osiris ani is triumphant it is made new before the gods he hath gained power over it he hath not been spoken to according to what he hath done he hath gotten power over his own members his heart obeyeth him he is the lord thereof 
it is in his body, and it shall never fall away therefrom. Osiris, the scribe, Ani, victorious in peace, and triumphant in the beautiful Amentar, and on the mountain of eternity, bid thee to be obedient unto me in the underworld. Chapter 28 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette in some papyri containing the Theban recension of the Book of the Dead, e.g. those of Nu and Amenem, this chapter has no vignette. In the papyrus of nefer uben -ef, the deceased is seen holding his heart upon his breast with his left hand, and kneeling before a tailed monster in human form, who holds a knife in his right hand, and grasps his tail with the left. Another papyrus shows the deceased offering incense to Osiris, who, standing on a pedestal in the form of Mart, holds the flail and sceptre in his hands. In the Brocklehurst papyrus, the deceased is kneeling and holding his heart in his left hand, which is outstretched. See Navel, a totem book. In the Turin papyrus, the deceased is adoring his heart, which is placed on a pedestal before a seated deity. Lepsius, Toten Book. Text. The chapter of not letting the heart of the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief, new, triumphant, be carried away from him in the underworld. He saith, Hail, thou lion god! I am the flower bush, Unb. That which is an abomination unto me is the divine block. Let not this my heart, hearty, be carried away from me by the fighting gods in Anu. Hail, thou who dost wind bandages round Osiris and who hast seen set. Hail, thou who returnest after smiting and destroying him before the mighty ones. This, my heart, sitteth and weepeth for itself before Osiris. It hath made supplication for me. I have given unto him, and I have decreed unto him, the thoughts of the heart in the house of the god Usekhra, and I have brought to him sand at the entry to Kemenu, Hermopolis Magna. Let not this, my heart, hearty, be carried away from me. I make thee to dwell upon his throne, O thou who join us together hearts, heart ye, in Seket Hetep, with years of strength, against all things that are an abomination unto thee, and to carry off food from among the things which belong unto thee, and are in thy grasp by reason of thy twofold strength. And this, my heart, hearty, is devoted to the decrees of the god Tem, who leadeth me into the dens of Suti. But let not this, my heart, which hath done its desire before the sovereign princes who are in the underworld, be given unto him. When they find the leg and the swathings, they bury them. Chapter 29 From the Papyrus of Ani Vignette, Ani standing with a staff in his hand. In the Turin Papyrus, this chapter has no vignette. Text The chapter of not letting the heart of a man be taken away from him in the underworld. Osiris, Ani, triumphant, saith, Turn thou back, O messenger of every god, is it that thou art come to carry away this my heart which liveth? But my heart which liveth shall not be given unto thee. As I advance, the gods hearken unto my offerings, and they all fall down upon their faces in their own places. Chapter 29a From the Papyrus of Amen Hetep Vignette This chapter has no vignette. Text. The chapter of not allowing the heart of Amenhetep 
triumphant to be carried away dead in the underworld. The deceased saith, My heart is with me, and it shall never come to pass that it shall be carried away. I am the Lord of hearts, the slayer of the heart. I live in right and truth, Mart, and I have my being therein. I am Horus, the dweller in hearts, who is within the dweller in the body. I live in my word, and my heart hath being. Let not my heart be taken away from me, let it not be wounded, and may neither wounds nor gashes be dealt upon me, because it hath been taken away from me. Let me have my being in the body of my father Seb, and in the body of my mother Newt. I have not done that which is held in abomination by the gods. Let me not suffer defeat there, but let me be triumphant. Chapter 29b From the Papyrus of Ani Vignette A Heart Text The Chapter of a Heart of Carnelian Osiris Ani Triumphant saith, I am the Benu, the soul of Ra, and the guide of the gods in the Tuat underworld. Their divine souls come forth upon earth to do the will of their cars, let therefore the soul of Osiris Ani come forth to do the will of his cart. Chapter 30 From Lepsius Token Book Vignette The deceased, with hands raised in adoration, standing before a beetle placed on a pedestal. Text The chapter of not letting the heart of a man be driven away from him in the underworld. Osiris, Au, An, triumphant, born of Sheret Amsu, triumphant, saith, My heart, my mother, my heart, my mother, my heart of my existence upon earth, may not stand up to oppose me in judgment. May there be no opposition to me in the presence of the sovereign princes. May no evil be wrought against me in the presence of the gods. May there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of the great god, the lord of Amentet. Homage to thee, O thou heart of Osiris Kent Amentet. Homage to you, O my reigns. Homage to you, O ye gods, who dwell in the divine clouds, and who are exalted, or holy, by reason of your sceptres. Speak ye fair words for the Osiris Au Ang, and make ye him to prosper before Nehebkab. And behold, though I be joined unto the earth, and am in the mighty innermost part of heaven, let me remain on the earth, and not die in Amentet, and let me be a coup therein for ever and ever. Rubric This chapter shall be recited over a basil scarab, which shall be set in a gold setting, and it shall be placed inside the heart of the man for whom the ceremonies of opening the mouth and of anointing with unguent have been performed and there shall be recited by way of a magical charm the words my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart of transformations chapter thirty a from the papyrus of nu vignette in many of the papyri containing the theban recension this chapter has no vignette in one however the vignette is a heart standing above a vase in another the deceased is seen adoring his heart and in another the deceased is standing before four gods one of whom is offering a heart to him text the chapter of not letting the heart of the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief Nu, triumphant, be driven away from him in the underworld. He saith, O oh, my heart, my mother, O oh, my heart, my mother, O oh, my heart of my existence upon earth, may naught stand up to oppose me in judgment in the presence of the lords of the trial. Let it not be said of me, and of that which I have done, 
he hath done the deeds against that which is right and true may naught be against me in the presence of the great god the lord of amentet homage to thee o my heart homage to thee o my heart homage to you o my reigns homage to you o ye gods who dwell in the divine clouds and who are exalted or holy by reason of your sceptres speak ye for me fair things to ra and make ye me to prosper before nehebka and behold me even though i be joined to the earth in the mighty innermost parts thereof let me remain upon the earth and let me not die in amentet but become a coup therein chapter thirty b from the papyrus of ani vignette some papyri containing the theban recension give this chapter without any vignette and it is probable that this arises from the fact that it often appears as one of the texts which occur in the great judgment scene where it forms the prayer put into the mouth of the deceased see the papyrus of ani sheet three and the papyrus of hunafa sheet three in the papyrus of nebseni sheet four the deceased kneels in one pan of the balance and he is being weighed against his heart which rests in the other in the presence of osiris the great god the governor of everlastingness the support of the beam is surmounted by a human head and the tongue of the balance is being scrutinized by a dog-headed egg seated on a pedestal who is called thoth the lord of the balance elsewhere this ape is seated on a pedestal with steps and is called the lord of kemenu hermopolis magna the righteous weigher in the papyrus of amenneb the deceased stands by the balance while a figure of himself is being weighed against his heart in this example of the scene the support of the beam is surmounted by the head of a jackal elsewhere the vignette is simply a heart or a scarab or the deceased seated adoring his heart or the deceased standing in adoration before a beetle which is the symbol of the god capera the self-created god and the type of the resurrection text the chapter of not letting the heart of osiris the scribe of the holy offerings of all the gods ani triumphant be driven from him in the underworld he saith my heart my mother my heart my mother my heart whereby i came into being may naught stand up to oppose me at my judgment may there be no opposition to me in the presence of the sovereign princes to charge charge may there be no parting of thee from me in the presence of him that keepeth the balance thou art my car the dweller in my body the god kanemu who knitteth and strengtheneth my limbs mayest thou come forth into the place of happiness whither we go may the shenit that is the divine officers of the court of osiris who form the conditions of the lives of men not cause my name to stink let it be satisfactory unto us and let the listening be satisfactory unto us and let there be joy of heart unto us at the weighing of words let not that which is false be uttered against me before the great god the lord of amentet verily how great shalt thou be when thou risest in triumph rubric from the papyrus of amenhetep these words are to be said over a scarab of green stone encircled with a band of refined copper and having a ring of silver which shall be placed on the neck of the coup. This chapter was found in the city of Kemenu, Hermopolis Magna, under the feet of the statue of this god. It was inscribed upon a slab of iron of the south, in the writing of the god himself, in the time of the majesty of the king of the north and of the south. Hen Karu. 
I, triumphant, by the royal son, Heru ta ta f who discovered it whilst he was on his journey to make an inspection of the temples and of their estates. In some ancient papyri, the text of this chapter is made to follow the rubric of chapter 64, with which it had some close connection, and in others it follows the rubric of chapter 118. The rubrical direction concerning chapter 64 reads, Behold, make a scarab of green stone, wash it with gold, and place it in the heart of a man, that is, the deceased, and it will perform for him the opening of the mouth. Anoint it with unguent, and recite over it as a charm the following words. My heart, my mother, my heart, my mother, etc. In the Turin Papyrus, it follows chapter 30, which contains parts of chapters 30a and 30b. Chapter 31 From the Papyrus of Nu Vignette In some ancient papyri, the vignette of this chapter represents the deceased spearing a crocodile, but in the Sa'ite recension, the deceased is attacking four crocodiles. Text The chapter of beating back the crocodile that cometh to carry away the charm from Nu, the overseer of the palace, the chancellor-in-chief triumphant, the son of the overseer of the palace, Amex Hetep, triumphant in the underworld. He saith, Get thee back, return, get thee back, thou crocodile fiend sweet, thou shalt not advance to me, for I live by reason of the magical words which I have by me. I do not utter that name of thine to the great God who will cause thee to come to the two divine envoys. The name of the one is Betty, and the name of the other is Harakan Ma. Heaven hath power over its seasons, and the magical word hath power over that which is in its possession, that therefore my mouth hath power over the magical word which is therein. My front teeth are like unto flint knives and my jaw teeth are like unto the gnome of Tutta. Hail, thou that sittest with thine eyeball upon these my magical words. Thou shalt not carry them away, O thou crocodile that livest by means of magical words. In the Turin papyrus, the following lines are added to this chapter. I am the prince in the field, I, even I, am Osiris, who hath shut him, his father Seb, together with his mother Nut, on the day of the great slaughter. My father is Seb, and my mother is Nut. I am Horus, the firstborn of Ra, who is crowned. I am Anpu, Anubis, on the day of reckoning. I, even I, am Osiris, the prince who goeth in, and declareth the offerings which are written down. I am the guardian of the door of Osiris. Even I, I have come, I have become glorious, or a clen. I have been reckoned up, I am strong, I have come, and I avenge mine own self. I have sat in the birth chamber of Osiris, and I was born with him, and I renew my youth along with him. I have laid hold upon the thigh which was by Osiris, and I have opened the mouth of the gods therewith. I sit upon the place where he sitteth, and I write down the number of the things which make strong the heart, thousands of loaves of bread, thousands of vases of beer, which are upon the altars of his father Osiris, numbers of jackals, wolves, oxen, redfowl, geese, and ducks. Horus hath done away with the sacrifices of Thoth. I fill the office of priest in the regions above, and I write down there the things which make strong the heart, I make offerings, or offerings are made to me, at the altars of the Prince of Tattoo, and I have my being through the oblations made to him. I snuff the wind of the east by his head, and I lay hold upon the breezes of the west thereby. I go round about heaven in the four quarters thereof. I stretch out my hand 
and grasp the breezes of the south which are upon its hair grant unto me air among the venerable beings and among those who eat bread rubric if this chapter be known by the deceased he shall come forth by day he shall rise up to walk upon the earth among the living and he shall never fail and come to an end never 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 chapter thirty two from lepsius totenbuch vignette four crocodiles advancing against the deceased who is spearing one of them text the chapter of beating back the crocodile that cometh to carry away the magical words from the coup in the underworld osiris auf ank triumphant saith the mighty one fell down upon the place where he is or as others say upon his belly but the company of the gods caught him and set him up again my soul cometh and it speaketh with its father and the mighty one delivereth it from these eight crocodiles i know them by their names and what they live upon and i am he who hath delivered his father from them get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the west thou that livest upon the stars which never rest for that which is an abomination unto thee is in my belly o thou that hast eaten the forehead of osiris i am set get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the west for the serpent being now is in my belly and i will give him unto thee let not thy flame be against me get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the east who feedest upon those who eat their own filth for that which is an abomination unto thee is in my belly i advance i am osiris get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the east the serpent fiend now is in my belly and i will give him unto thee let not thy flame be against me get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the south who feedest upon filth and waste and dirt for that which is an abomination unto thee is in my belly shall not the flame be on thy hand i am sept get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the south for i am safe by reason of my charm my fist is among the flowers and i will not give it unto thee get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the north who feedest upon what is offered within the hours for that which thou abominatest is in my belly let not thy venom be upon my head for i am ten get thee back o crocodile that dwellest in the north for the goddess sarket is in my belly and i have not yet brought her forth i am oatech marti or melti the things which are created are in the hollow of my hand and those which have not yet come into being are in my body i am clothed and wholly provided with thy magical words o ra the which are in heaven above me and in the earth beneath me i have gained power and exaltation and a full breathing throat in the abode of my father ur that is the mighty one and he hath delivered unto me the beautiful amentet which destroyeth living men and women but strong is its divine lord who suffereth from sickness or as others say exhaustion twofold therein day by day my face is open my heart is upon its seat and the crown with the serpent is upon me day by day i am ra who is his own protector and nothing shall ever cast me to the ground End of chapter 22